I will uh, I'll check out your board, Skylin. Hey, hey, castlings. Good to see you. How was your weekend? Okay, let's change our lifestyle now. Uh, maybe I think the dark and maybe was better. And we'll just pull it right back. Like that now. Normally I'd go heavier than that, but I've noticed when we bring it into max, it comes up much darker than it appears here. So I'm going to pull it back a bit. Oh, you went to a show, left early. Cool. Yeah, I had a pretty quiet weekend too, just chilling out at home. It's always nice to be able to relax and not have to do anything really, you know. Just because it's a weekend doesn't mean you've got to do something. I checked out that video, like I said, it, that you whispered to me. It looked really cool. Really cool. Good job. Festival looks like a lot of fun. So let's paint a few in over here. Now, now I am leaving the um, the mapping channel style turned on here. So And maybe we'll do this one over here. Yeah, no, no worries. It did. It looked really good. And the festival looked like a lot of fun. Well, the, the event looked like a lot of fun. I want to make this one a little bit different, so I'm going to throw on a new layer. I'm going to grab another texture that's a bit more unique. Maybe not that one. No, not that one either. Um, <laughs> focus creep. Yeah, true, Galen. Yeah, no, maybe not that one. This one might work. Scale it right down. I just want to create a couple of unique looks to these um, columns. I could do it with a bitmap texture, but I want to try and do it, I think, with um, a dirt texture. So maybe something like that. Take that down. I'm just going to play with the layer style on this to see if it, uh, I can come what it's going to look like. Nightbot spamming again. I have to check that. Yeah, I haven't played a game in a while. What was the last game I was playing? Um, I played The Witcher 3 recently. I haven't finished that yet. I, I, I've got like five or six games that I alternate between at one time. So I want to jump back into The Witcher 3, play a bit more Fallout 4. I still like Skyrim with all, all modded up completely, of course. Um, and I've been getting into Elite and GTA as well a bit. I'm about halfway through GTA, just started Elite. Probably about halfway through Witcher. So I should jump back into a game too, I think. It's been a while. It's getting the time sometimes, you know. <laughs> You can sit down and play a game before you know it. You've been there for, you know, eight hours. Let's try darken on this. We may have to do an invert on it, I think. Let's try an invert. Adjustment stack and invert. Yeah, unfortunately, it's not showing up great. Let's remove the adjustment stack, I think. What game are you going to play, Galen? What are you playing at the moment? Let's see. 
lighten screen. What was the ad like? Oh no, ad blows it out way too much. Overlay can be good, but you've got to watch it because it'll throw out um, a lot of color. See the black areas are bringing out the color underneath of it, and that's not really great. EU Online. Yeah, a friend of mine really got, likes that game as well. I've never played it. it. It's supposed to be really good. Didn't um, didn't it go free recently as well? I'm not sure what sort of account the free account is, but yeah, I heard, I think I read on Blues News that it was, um, part of it was going free or some something was free about it now. Yeah, this, this uh, friend of mine, he really likes um, EVE Online. I'm old school though, I like Elite. I played Elite years ago when I had a Commodore Amiga. Ah, oh, you're both in, you like EVE as well, hey. I'll have to check it out. Oh, uh, yeah, I thought I read something about a free weekend. Right. Okay. No, no wonder I can't see it. It's I didn't know the lead dev uh, did leave a lead. Heck, I didn't hear about that. Well, that's that's a shame. When, when did that happen? I mean, I generally keep, they send me uh, newsletters like every few weeks and stuff, so I keep up with it that way. And I check them out when they're uh, streaming, like when they have one of their events. But I didn't hear about the lead dev leaving. That, that's That's a shame. Maybe it was a while ago, because uh, like I said, I've only recently got into Elite, so. A while back, yeah. Well, that's a shame to hear. I mean, uh, after the second expansion, oh, okay. Because I didn't get into the game until um, the second expansion came out. I bought it with the expansion included, Horizons included. So that's probably why I didn't hear about it. I didn't didn't get into the game before then. <laughs> a friend of mine is a software engineer, and that's always a problem. You know, these particularly with uh, game code, a lot of the time, they're really complex pieces of um, programming to understand and. You, these companies should be careful when they uh, piss off a programmer because yeah, it, it, programming to understand in general is quite taxing. And if you've written um, code that's very specific to what you've been working on, and you haven't documented it well, or even you know if you do document it well, it can still be really complex to try and understand. Yeah, it's got a few bugs that lead dangerous at the moment, Galen, so you may want to wait a little bit before you uh, check it out because the latest patch that they released has created quite a few bugs and people aren't happy about that. So that's why I've stopped playing and I want to wait till they fix it all up. People have been saying that uh, missions and stuff, they're not, that the payouts on missions and things aren't very good and they've broken passenger miss missions and, yeah, all sorts of things have gone wrong at the moment. So, yeah, maybe sticking to Eve is better at the moment until they figure out what's going on. I'm going to throw a new layer on here. Let's have a look at this. You actually, the waltz is there if you, um, or the blue Danu or whatever it is. You've got to buy a docking computer though to do it. It's when you activate the docking computer, the um, music starts playing. And if you don't have the docking computer and you're doing it manually, yeah, the music doesn't play. So, but if you buy the docking computer, you can get the music as you dock. 
you just get the computer to dock for you. You can't do it manually. You have the music, unfortunately. Yeah, that's what I remember about the original Elite 2, though, is uh, that music as you dock. Let's see if we can try and invert on this one. Uh, you really don't want to work, do you? You don't want it. No, I want to remove that. Remove that adjustment stack, it's not working well. Um. Let's pull that back a bit. Not the look I'm really going for, I'm just going to throw another layer down. I know the look in my head, I've just got to get it to show up on the model. Yeah, let's, let's try this one. Scale it up a bit. And again, you, you notice I'm using the same texture I used uh, before. It's just to keep things consistent. I'm just going to throw a bit of dark through there. I'm going to throw a bit of dark through here. I'm going to rotate it around. I'm going to throw some dark down through here. And maybe a bit through here and through here. We'll break that down. And let's play with our layer styles. Let's move the texture out of the way for a minute. Okay, darken and pull it right back. Again, I'm going to pull it back more than I normally would because um, it shows up darker in Max. That's obviously a gamma thing, a gamma difference between. Um, Mari and 3D Studio Max. Just, I don't really like that white on, on the middle of that column that, that was there, so I'm going to turn that layer off, I think. Actually, it might be the one underneath of it. Yeah, it's the one underneath. And we will go back into our channels and export flattened. We're going to save this one out as uh, revision 3.tga. After this, we'll probably do one more and then we can uh, start moving it around the outside of the model. So we'll jump back in. At the moment, these are using identical textures and because they're next to each other, that's not a good thing. So let's create another shader. Uh, bitmap, small banister column painted R3, that's the one we want. We'll pipe that into the diffuse and we turn on shaded in viewport so that we can see it. We have our um, model selected so let's just assign the material to the selection. Okay, we close that down for a minute and have a look. And it, there's, they, they look similar, but they're different enough that um, you can see that you're not using the same texture. It's unique. So we're going to create one more for around here. I'm just going to get the model ready by um, selecting that group and attaching it all. So I'm just going to isolate the selection, ungroup, select the first column, and we'll attach them all together. Okay, we can exit our isolation mode. We should be ready to go um, as soon as I 
copy our UV channels over. So back into our Utilities tab, our Channel Info. We're going to copy the UVs from Channel 1. Select our second one and paste the UVs in. Okay, now we're ready to go. Let's jump back into Murray again. The mouse is playing up a little bit. Let's turn off what we just did on that layer. And let's jump back into our original texture. Where is our original texture? Right there. We're going to throw on a new layer. I'm just going to save our file here so we can be uh, just to be safe. Mari generally is pretty pretty good. I don't think I've ever had Mari crash on me. Max has crashed on me, but Mari generally won't. Still, it's a good habit to get into just in case. Okay, let's um, get rid of some of the dirt marks here and. Also up here, we'll make it a little bit different. Um, we'll get rid of this. And the bit at the bottom. Uh, also, I, I want to change this one up quite a bit because it's the last one we're doing, so, with this column set. So I want to make sure it's, quite, it's, a, it's different from the other two. Yes, this will be the third one. We'll, we'll, we'll get a, we should be able to get away with three, I think. We'll see how we go. Just doing three variations. Once we've um, moved them around, if we find that um, we can notice the repetition, we can always create one more. Okay, let's throw a bit of a different texture through the middle here. Um, Put a bit of a dirt mark down here. And maybe down through here, we'll add a bit of dirt. And maybe some lichen through the middle here. We'll bake that down and we'll move to the other side. Okay, let's clean up that a bit so it's a little bit less dirty. And we'll clean up this one a bit too. And this one, and also this one here on this side. Like that. This one down here, and we'll add a bit of different dirt up here. We'll add some dirt here. And maybe we'll add a bit of dirt through here. Um, maybe, maybe, yes, just through here we'll add some lichen. Not there though. Okay, I'm going to bake that down and throw on a new layer and we'll grab another dirt texture that we can throw over the top. Let's scale that up a bit. Let's start here in the second column. Uh, we'll do these two through the middle. You see I'm not being too precious about painting these down because these are dirt maps. Um, you don't have to really worry about them too much. And in fact, they'll look better if, you're, if they're less perfect. 
Let's do those two to begin with. I'm just going to bake that down. Move our texture out of the way. And let's play with our layer styles a little bit. Uh, let's try darken and pull it back. And again, I'm going to go lighter than um, I normally would just because Max will show it up as darker. Going to rotate it around and we'll throw a couple on, we'll throw it on a couple of more columns. So we'll do, we'll do these two here on the end. And we'll do this one here. We'll bake that down. I'm going to throw one more layer on. No. Maybe. Oh, actually, no. Okay. Need copy. Anything keeps me going. All right. Let's find a texture we can use to dirty up the bottom of this uh, column a bit, I think. Let's see what you look like. And again, this is a texture I've used before, but um, it helps to keep consistency through the model. So, but I'm going to scale this one a little differently. I'll scale it up a little larger. I'm working on a new layer. Just going to paint in, and again, I'm I'm concerned with the dark part of the texture here, not the white. So, I'm going to go up a bit higher in, in some spots as well. And up through here. And up through here. Let's bake that down. Yeah, thanks. It's um, it's open source music. Like it's it's non copyright. You could I got it from uh, SoundCloud, I think. Can't exactly remember the name of it. Yeah, it's got that epic feel to it, though, hasn't it? Let's change our layer style and pull it back. and rotate our model around and we'll do the other side as well. I may actually do the top of the columns too, I think. So I'm going to stay on the same layer. I'm going to leave my um, layer style set there. That'll just help me see as I'm painting it in. Yeah, yeah. I just wanted something for the B-Road back that was um, not too frenetic, you know what I mean? Just something soothing and cool that people could listen to while I was away. Maybe this bit here on the end. I'm going to bake that down. And I'm just going to do a couple on the top as well. Maybe this one here, down through here, and a bit here on the top. I'll bake that down. I'm just going to rotate back around and do a couple on the top on this side as well. Maybe this one here on the end. This one here. This one and 
this spot. Break that down. All right, let's export this one. And we'll do this one as revision four. We should have enough uh, variation now to texture up the outside of the um, banisters. So let me save our file, our project. Jump back into Max. We'll jump back into our material editor. Again, I'm working along now because I'm creating copies of the same texture. It just helps me visually to, to see that I how many variations I have going. So let's throw on a standard and a bitmap. And it's R4, that's the one we want. Plug it into the diffuse channel. Turn it on our show shaded. Assign the material. Now I actually think that, uh, see what I mean by coming up darker in Max than it does in Mari. I think I might pull it back just a little bit. I, wa I want it to look different, but not, I don't want it to be quite so dark. And I know it was that last layer we added, so I'm just going to um, pull back a little here and re-export. We can uh, overwrite the file we just saved. That should be fine. Just means we'll probably have to reload it when we get back into uh, Max. Yep. So we just select our texture and reload it. That's a bit better. Not quite as dark. So now we have three unique textures here on this side and um, that texture is also different as well because we don't want the same texture here on either side. So what we're going to do is, that's R4, we're going to copy that one to the one next to it just here. So we're missing, we're skipping the one in the middle and we're moving to this one to make it, more, to add some variation. So I'm going to isolate those columns and I'm going to ungroup them. And now I'm going to attach all of these ones together. We'll edit isolation mode. And I'm actually going to save my file here because we've done a bit of work and we don't want to um, lose what we've worked on in case Max crashes. Yeah, I think once we get uh, the angel statues here as well, and then we get some ivy growing, it'll really help to tie everything together, particularly once we texture up these um, remaining columns and banisters, so railings. So now we're going to go into our utilities tab and our channel info. We're going to select that one because we have to copy our UVs across. Thanks for the high scale and I appreciate it. Okay, so we've copied our UVs across. We're going to jump into our material editor. We're working with uh, revision four here and we're going to assign it. Okay. <clears throat> Let's jump into full view here so we can get a better look at what we're working on. Okay, so we have That texture is different to this one. We've skipped this one and moved to this one. Yeah, I appreciate it, Galen. Thanks. It's always nice to have um, somebody host your channel. 
always appreciated. So we missed this texture and we jumped to this texture. So now we're going to copy this texture, which is uh, number three. We're going to do that here. So let's let's select that and isolate it. We will ungroup it and we will attach these together. And we'll end isolation. Again, we'll go back into our utilities tab and we're going to copy our UVs from this set of columns and we're going to paste them into this set of columns. Just overwrite. Jump into our material tab and we'll come back to number three here and we're going to assign it. Okay. Now, I know that this texture is different to this texture. So this texture was number one, the first one we worked on, that's number two. So we're going to select those columns. We'll do the same thing. We'll isolate. We will ungroup. And we will attach. Remember, you can also use this attach list. So you can select them through a list like this if you prefer to do it that way. I like to actually individually select them that way. I know what I'm doing. I'm going to end isolation. We're going to jump back into our utilities tab and our channel info and copy our UVs across. Uh, now again, we're going to go with um, UV map one this time because that's two. So go into material editor. We know because we laid them out all nice and neatly which one's which. So that's one, that's two, that's three, and that's four. So we want one. We'll assign that material. Now we have variations happening all through here. None of the textures are the same. They're all unique. When you do a render, it will all look unique. But now we can start um, repeating them. So this is texture two, which I don't think we've used yet on this side. So let's do that now. Let's select these. Again, we go into isolation mode and we ungroup them. Um, we're going to select the first one and we'll attach them. We'll end isolation. We're going to select our neighboring columns and go into our utilities tab and uh, channel info and copy the UVs across again. So copy from one to the other. And again, I know that uh, I want to copy material two this time, which is this one here, because it's the second one in our row. Let's assign that material. All right. Now we can just start varying them up a bit. So. Now we can jump to material one because this one is far enough away from the front side you won't notice. We will ungroup. And we'll attach them. And we'll end isolation. Jump into our Utilities tab, select the one next to it and copy its UVs. Select the one we're working on and paste the UVs in. And what number did we say we were going to use there? Number two, I think, or no, number one. Yeah, number one, because we used two there. Okay, so our material.
Now we we'll use number two and then number one, and then we'll use number three and then number four. Isolate, ungroup, and then attach. <laughs> yeah, it is too bad. Still, it's almost hypnotic repeating the process over and over again. It's relaxing to a degree, actually. Sometimes 3D modeling, particularly when I'm um, coming up with the idea for the model, when I'm trying to decide on the shape of it, that can be a little stressful because you're constantly thinking about what, what, what would look good, what shape I should use, Whereas this is more relaxing, I know what I'm doing, it's just repeating the same process over and over again. So I don't mind actually doing it. Okay. Yeah, I don't think um, Max has a macro function like they do in Photoshop. Let's copy our UVs. We'll paste them in. We will use number three this time, so one, two, three, this one here. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Just checking to make sure the columns are the same. If the number of columns varies, you're not going to be able to copy and paste between the UVs. So when we get around to the back side here, which has one that's, that's quite long, it's like two of these together, they, that's going to have to be textured separately and, and individually. Um, one, two, three, four. These ones should be okay though. So let's uh, isolate our selection and ungroup our model. And then attach them all. Okay, we'll end our selection. Select the one next to it and go back into our Utilities tab and Channel Info and copy our UVs across. Um, so we've used them all again now, so let's start back with number two, I think, which is over here. So this one here. <laughs> so it's a cyanomaterial. material. 